Good morning. We're going to do linear velocity now. We talked about angular velocity yesterday. And I want to go over what the difference is between angular and linear velocity with a picture and, uh, and some description of that picture. So let's say we had a carousel, like a, you know, just a, a carousel, like a amusement park or something like that. And we had horses on it going up and down. And let's say we have a horse here, a horse here, and a horse here. And these are all spinning in circles. So let me try to draw concentric or some circles here. And then different colors. Something like that. And we can see, and we'll label these um, horse one, horse two, and horse three. And here's the difference between angular velocity and linear velocity with a nice picture. If I go from this angle, let's say we do a partial turn here, this thing's spinning, you know, in, uh, in this direction. These guys are all spinning in this direction. And uh, the angular velocity, the horse riders would wind up here, here, and here after that time period. Their angular velocity, it would be like having a speedometer on your horse that measured what angle it is. And each one of the riders would notice that their angle of spin would be equal. So this W, this not W, omega, the angular velocity, would all be equal. Four, one, two, and three. They're all equal. One, two, and three. Horse riders one, two, and three all have the same angle. Let's say that was, you know, sixty degrees or maybe one radian or something like that. That would they would all be equal there. But their linear velocities would be completely different. And remember, circumference equals pi times diameter. And uh, the distance around these circles, of course, is greater depending on what the radius is. So Horse rider number three's radius, the red circle, is much greater than horse rider one. Therefore, in the same time period, in one spin cycle, it would take, um, even though it took the same time, the distance of the red circle is much greater than the green or the white. So their linear velocities, V, which is equal over here I have, to the radius times their angular velocity, would be um, greatest, so three would be greater than two, which would be greater than one. And I think that's a pretty good explanation of what angular and linear velocity is and what the difference is. But you know, remember, circumference is pi times d, and that is linear because you could cut this, like we stretch a rope around it, cut it, and stretch it out straight. So it is a distance. Let's make a note here. This is a distance. Okay. A lot of people think that's a circle and it's not linear, but it is. All right, so there's that. Now, actually let me bring that back. Let's do let's do a little um linear velocity problem real fast. Let's say I'm going to do number 28 from tonight's homework. It says omega, which is the angular velocity equals 16.6 .6 radians per second and it comma and then it says the radius r equals 8 centimeters 8 centimeters and it wants you to find the linear velocity so find linear velocity Okay, I'm going to pause this and you try that. Okay, well hopefully you didn't have too much trouble with that because if they give you um, the angular velocity, it's just that times the radius. So we got V equals R omega. So the velocity is 8 times 16.6 .6, and that is 132. 
0.8 centimeters per second and that would be its linear speed so if you you know if you had a speedometer on the horse that's what it would read all right cool let me get that up there and then we're gonna do another little bit more involved type problem here okay and let me also get that off all right there we go uh last problem here and this is a pretty big one here it says a pulley is turned 90 degrees per second there's a question in tonight's homework that's going to be very similar to this a pulley is turned 90 degrees per second find the number of revolutions per minute that's called the RPM. If you ever hear of that, that's revolutions per minute. And then B says, if the radius of the pulley is five inches, find the linear velocity in inches per second. All right, I'm going to pause this again, and I want you to try this. Be right back. Okay, and we are back. We need to find the number of revolutions per minute. Revolutions per minute of a circle. Well, if you have a circle and it's turning 90 degrees how much of a circle is that well that's one-fourth of a circle that's one-fourth of a revolution 90 degrees per second is equal to one-fourth of a revolution per second now we want to know find the number of revolutions per minute so to do that we need to convert so we need to multiply this by a conversion factor and we want this seconds to turn into minutes so we do this all the time in physics so we put the seconds up here so they'll cancel and the minutes on the bottom so one minute is 60 seconds or you can just multiply one fourth by 60 and uh, you can see here that the seconds are going to cancel and I have that's going to be what 15 15 so it's going to be 15 revolutions per minute that's the answer to part a now part b says if the radius of the pulley is five inches find the linear velocity in inches per second inches per second okay so this what we have now is a circle that has a radius of five inches and what we need to know first on this problem is how far is it around the circle so if this is five inches its diameter is 10 this whole thing here is 10 inches and since circumference equals pi times D the circumference of this circle in question is 3.14 times 10 which is basically 31.4 inches well um, all right, so the next thing we do is to take, since this is equal to one revolution, and we have 15 of them, this thing is going 15 revolutions every minute, we want to know how many inches there are in 15 revolutions. So we need to first come over here and take 15 times the amount of inches in this circle. So 15 times 31.4 is 471 so this is 471 inches and this thing is going basically 15 revolutions we saw that one revolution is this so it's going 471 inches per minute and then all we need to do is convert that thing into inches per second this is a good problem so we need to change this back to inches per second well my top is good to go it's in inches but I need to make this bottom into seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds, just like before, but I had that flipped up there. So this time, what we're going to do, you can see minutes cancel, is divide by 60. So we'll take 471 and divide it by 60, and that is about 7.85 inches per second. And uh, you should probably go back and rewatch that. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.